Today I was going to be sharing my Warden build that's capable of tanking, healing, and doing DPS. This Warden has been my main for a very long time. The last time I made a video on it was over four years ago, so I made some minor little adjustments from that build back then, but it's still pretty much the same build. I just figured I would update it for 2022. First off, let's start with attributes. So I went 47 into health and I went 17 into stamina. And my main goal here was to at least achieve getting 40,000 hit points. I went a little bit over. So as you can see, I went to 41,142. And this is also including food. And the food that I am using is this one right here. So the braised rabbit. It's pretty affordable on the auction house. So you can just get it on there. That's usually how I get it. I don't really care for crafting in this game. And this gives maximum stamina and also maximum health. On top of that, I did do some stuff with the champion points, which I don't really care for this, this new system. <laughs> I haven't played for like a couple years and I had to reallocate all this stuff and it was such a pain in the ass. I'm going to go into more in depth with this, but there was some points in here that was health focused. So I'll come back to this a little later in the video. Now let's take a look at the armor and also the weapons that I use. The main focus of what I'm trying to build with the armor sets is trying to get as much self-healing as possible. So starting with the monster set, I'm using the Scourge Harvester set. And what this does, when I take damage, I have a 10% chance of creating a beam that life steals, especially when you're fighting a boss and you're going to be sitting there just taking hits for a while. This thing procs pretty often, even though it only says 10%, I've seen it almost permanent, where it's just like constantly just showing the beam. So it, it's very, very worth it to run this set. The second set I'm using is the leeching set. The way this works is when you take damage on this one, you summon a cloud leeching poison underneath the assailant. So basically you'll see like a big patch on the ground and that will damage them and also heal you for the damage done. The next set I'm using is the Braha's curse set. With this one, when you deal damage, you have a 25% chance of creating desecrated ground for five seconds. And what this does, is it damages the mob, just like that last set, but also heals you for the damage done. And with this Braha's curse set, I'm using it on the accessories and then also on the weapons. With all the pieces, I always went for maximum stamina. I believe this is something that you can reroll yourself. I don't fully remember. I haven't done this in a long time. But if you can get stamina on it, it would definitely be best. You could also go with health if you really feel more comfortable just, you know, doing that instead. I prefer the stamina because I would like to be able to do more damage while also tanking. So it helps out with that situation. And I like to solo with this guy a lot. So I like to be able to do world bosses and all that by myself with no issues. With the second stat, Divines, I wish I could get this on every single piece. This is actually something that I'm going to be working on as I continue to play now because I'm just getting back into the game. So if you're able to get Divines on every single piece, then awesome. This That's definitely the way to go. And it's probably one of the best attributes to really aim for. But there is also reinforced if you're interested in that to get a little bit more armor value. That way, you know, they don't hit you as hard. So it's up to you. On the weapons, I'm running the, the weapon damage enhancement. So extra damage on that. And then also I'm running with precise. But I went with that on everything. But I did get the vines on the shield. So that's a good one. Now let's talk about skills. So with the weapons, I have two different things going on with this. The sword and shield, the main focus of it is to one, tank, and then also heal. Whereas my dual blades, the main focus of it is DPS. So let's start off with the sword and shield. My first ability, piercing armor. The main reason why I went with this is for the minor and major breach. And what it does is it gives physical resistance debuff to the mob when you hit them with it. It's awesome to start with this just so you could debuff the mob's resistance. That way the DPS on your group or even yourself would benefit from that. And of course, this is if you're playing as a tank. You don't want to do this as a DPS because you'll piss off the tank. Shielded Assault, really nice to close the gap, especially when you get mobs that try to like run from you and all that. This is perfect. But the cool thing about Shielded Assault is that it gives you a damage shield. And this does scale with your max health, so if you decided to go with more health in your build, then you'll benefit from this even more. Ice Fortress, this is a nice one because it's just really good support for yourself. You're giving yourself physical and spell resistance by 5,948. That's super, super good. 
especially when you start doing the really hard veteran dungeons they're gonna start hitting like trucks and this is something that could really be the difference between you getting one shotted or not you also gain minor protection with this so five percent less damage taken so it's good now the rest of these are all heals echoing vigor this is something that you get from the alliance war tree and this is through pvp so if you're not into pvp then you might want to pick something else and you could probably go with something in the green balance line if you want to um like living vines is actually pretty decent i don't prefer it but you know it's it's all right so if you're not interested in PvP, you could probably do that. But I will make a guide eventually on how to get the Alliance War leveled up without even PvPing. Because I've done it in the past where you just like repair the walls and stuff. But I'm going to see if there's a more efficient way to do that. I'll get my research done and then I'll make a video eventually. So the cool thing about Echoing Vigor is what it does is it heals over time. So over 10 seconds, it's healing 10,000. It's not nearly as much as the other one because there's a single target one to heal yourself and it heals for like double that. But the cool thing about the Echoing version is that it's an AOE heal. So it heals everybody in the area when you hit it. So it's a nice little heal over time for you and also your group. So you could just always keep them topped off. The main heal is soothing spores this one does a crap ton of healing it's such an awesome heal not only for yourself but also for your team and it heals for 15 percent more when they're closer to you and since it's a stamina heal it makes it really easy to build up because then you can just start doing some heavy attacks to get your stamina back and you're good to go from there for the ultimate i'm using healing thicket this thing is really awesome it comes in handy very often and it heals for a crap ton it's really awesome to plop down whenever you're dealing with like a really terrible situation where like red circles were everywhere and everybody's losing health just throw it down on the ground and everybody's safe another heal that i'm using is in my dual wielding tree so it's a uh, green lotus this thing is so awesome because you basically pop this thing you have this running your light and heavy attacks will heal. So I usually spend a lot of time swapping weapons to kind of pop all my buffs. So I'll do stuff like this. Pop the Ice Fortress, go over, pop the Lotus, go back over to Sword and Shield, do some heavy attacks, mix it up with some taunts, throw the Soothing Spore, you know, just keep doing this. And you can keep people topped off on healing all day long. Very different from a normal healer that uses like the, the Resto Staff but it makes it so much fun to do something different. And that's why I really like this build because it's a stamina healer. You know, you don't really see too many of those. You know what I mean? Now let's look at the dual wielding line. First ability, blood craze. I really like this one because this also adds some extra healing for yourself. So on top of doing this bleeding over time damage, it's healing you. And that's why I like tanking with this thing the most because just sit there absorbing all the damage because more mobs hitting me, the better. That way all the stuff is procking on top of blood craze procking. And then I'm hitting them getting green lotus healing. It's just like unlimited healing, man. It's so unbelievable. Lightweight beast trap. The reason why I use this is mainly for the critical damage increase. On top of that, this is a really nice bleed. So what I would do is couple it up with the blood craze. It's like double bleeding damage on top of you doing heavy and light attacks to mix it in. And it's just like a flurry of numbers, basically. And this is what makes it really great for DPSing, especially for a single target like a boss or whatever. For my burst damage, I'm using the subterranean assault. The cool thing about this one is that it does a double hit when I'm doing AOE farming. Another really good AOE farming tool is Shrouded Daggers. The cool thing about this ability too is that not only does it look cool to throw daggers, <laughs> adding to that AOE damage that you're getting from sub Subterranean Assault, but then it's also giving you major brutality and sorcery. So this is increasing your weapon and spell damage by 20% for 20 seconds. And then I'm using Werewolf for my ultimate ability. I really love Werewolf. I made a video about it years ago. I will link that in the description because it's still relevant today. But Werewolf, it's like its own entity. And this is something that's like a really awesome DPS tool as well. So if you didn't want to bother with the, the dual wielding or you start getting bored of it, you can plop into the Werewolf form and start going berserk on stuff. And Werewolf is just so much fun to use. The AoEs on it, the single target damage is like superb. It's so good. I definitely recommend doing Werewolf if you're going to go with a stamina build. In case you're interested, it's a red guard that I'm playing. I don't think it really matters what race you are. 
personally i think you could just go with whatever you want but i i know i usually have people ask me about that in my past videos so i figured i might as well just let you know now let's talk a little bit about the champion points i'm not super comfortable with uh this new champion point system i feel like they they kind of dumbed it down from what it used to be especially the craft line for example i just feel like it's lacking a lot of stuff that it used to have this kind of became something that's more about just being a thief and it works really well with my night blade character but doesn't really work so well with this one so the only one worth a damn is this one right here professional upkeep so this lowers the cost of repairing your armor and that's that's the only reason why i even bothered with this whole thing in the warfare line there's a little bit extra things in here that are kind of worth it like this one for example quick recovery so increasing the healing taken by one percent per stage it's only two percent you know <laughs> but I guess is better than nothing, but it still seems kind of pointless to me. Reduce your damage taken from non-player attacks. So 10% damage reduction. I guess that's helpful for tanking. I only took the 10 points just to get over to this one. Then increase healing done again. So that's decent. So I guess I'm getting 4% more healing. I went deeper into this line. Grants 350 offensive penetration. So there you go with more damage. Increase your chance to apply martial status effect. I don't even know what that does. I'll be completely honest. I, I learned that martial means just melee attacks. I thought martial meant like literally martial arts, like Yip Man or something, like coming around doing some crazy kung fu and shit. You know, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I didn't think that applied with swords, but all right, it's all melee. And then this one grants 100 to weapon spell damage with martial attacks so that melee stuff but yeah this this stuff really isn't necessary to make the build good or anything i just figured i would slap points in this thing just because because a lot of this stuff is just so minor that it really doesn't matter a whole lot like this one right here i went all in on it just because it had a reduction in the block stamina cost so i guess it works for me since i tank and then i only put three points in this just to be able to get down here and it says while in combat increase the amount of damage you can block by four percent it's not super necessary you know so it's whatever and then over here these are probably the only semi-important ones is this one right here which grants armor per stage so i maxed it out and it gave me 1731 in armor value so that's good and then this one right here 980 in max health by maxing that one out so those those two are like the only good ones in this whole entire like all the trees so if i'm gonna recommend anything is the fitness line just to get those two everything else you can do whatever the hell you want with pretty much and one last thing, the boon. The boon I'm running is the warrior, which gives weapon damage increase. And this scales with that divine sets that I'm trying to get on all my armor pieces. So this is why I always say go for divines because it works really well with the boon and the boon gives a really nice bonus depending on what you pick. So if you didn't want to go with the weapon damage, you could probably go with like a health one or or a stamina regen or something like that if you feel like you're lacking in those things you know what i mean so it's all up to you with that but all right that's the build i've been having a great time with this this is easily my favorite character in the whole game just especially with how diverse you could play this thing especially like all the different types of content so if i got bored of tanking i can go and just be a healer for a while or i can go and just dps which i usually don't queue for dps because the queue times are kind of crazy um i spend more time queuing as a tank because it's usually instant queue you know but the cool thing about it is that i can go in as a tank and also be able to do the other roles so in case the healer is struggling with healing i could contribute and be able to heal also you know so it makes it a lot more diverse and really fun to play but anyway that's my warden thanks for watching Leave a thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll be glad to get back to you. Have a nice day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.